Hey, good morning, it's Mike again. All right, so we're plugging away at the roofs. Um, trying really hard to get to the annotation section so we can finish up this book. All right, so I'm in, uh, I'm in Revit. Now we're talking about, we talked about roofs by extrusion. Now we're talking about roof in place. Now we talked a little bit about this, um, and we're gonna talk a lot more about this using advanced shape editing with floors and roofs later on in the chapter. But just to do a quick, uh, a quick review, we can also um, roof in place, if you remember, by going up to the architectural tab and going to component model in place. You can select a roof and you'll go into the, uh, the editing, the uh, family editing mode. Now, um, just give me a second here. I'm adjusting to my new glasses. Let's just call this roofs one. Now, if you remember, we have all these tools at our disposal now. We have the solid extrusion, the blend, revolve, sweep, swept blend, voids, uh, void forms, solid forms. So there's nothing to say um, that we can't do a quick revolve and do any type of shape we want. So if I was to uh, go ahead and say, okay, well, I want to revolve this surface around this axis line, and I want to create a boundary line that uh, takes on this shape, I could say, okay, well, let's create a shape this way. And let's create an arc. This way. And we could trim it up, get it, get it just right. Now, if we have both selected, it must be closed loop, so if I didn't finish it, let's see if I can grab another line. If it's overlapped, it might give us a problem. Now, notice I have it set at negative 180. If I do 180, it's going to do a, a semicircle or a, a half dome. So it's going to put it um, in, the, if, we put, if we look at it here, it's going to put it uh, below the reference line, below this level, um, the opposite side, the, the southern hemisphere, if you will. Let me see if I got this right. Okay, so if I put this... If I went and turned this, if I put this at 180 degrees, it would be upside down. So that, that's just a quick way of doing a half dome, a half dome. So there's, there's so many other, any, so many shapes you can make using these um, modeling tools. And as you can see, it'll, it'll come back down to the original uh, shape. You can adjust it. So for a, a barrel roof, you can see how that would um, that would help us. Um, all right, so again, and I'm not going to go into this because it's going to actually uh, get way more into this using advanced shape editing tools. But you know, we can, there's nothing to say we can't create a barrel roof, a dome roof, or a, an onion dome. And if you look at a lot of different um, structures, churches in particular, they use a lot of these these shapes. And we're going to go into that when we practice advanced modeling later in the chapter. But um, create a roof by face tool. Um, we've talked about this. When you have created an in-place mass or loaded a mass family, these types of roofs are typically more integrated with the overall building geometry than the example we've shown for in-place roofs. You can find more detail about this in Chapter 9. We talked about this a little bit. An in-place roof, if we were to go to, say, Level 1, we'll go to Architecture. And let's see, we draw some walls. We could easily just create an uh, in-place mass uh, roof. And we could use the pick walls command, right? If we were going to use uh, an extrusion, we could, uh, we could do the pick lines. We could draw a shape just using a regular rectangle. Right. Move this up to level three if we wanted to. Oops. Anyway, I right, see so you have the idea. You have the idea. You can make create anything you want in place. Uh, you could. Uh, you could. Uh, Apply, you know, apply by extrusion. 
and then there's advanced uh, modeling tools. So, again, if you saw a roof, roof by face, you could select, if you look here, it says select a face to add to the roof. Select again to remove, then press roof. Well, we don't have a face, right? We don't have a face. But if we were to draw one in, if we were to draw a face in, then we could select that face and make a roof out of it. So if I was to go to a component model in place and just create a mass, create any type of mass that I want, I can draw it over here, maybe. And create a void form, solid form, and then finish it. Well, then if I go to architecture, roof by face, I could select that face and then create roof. And now it's a basic roof, and I could. I add a split line to it, right, if I wanted to. And we can edit some things with the split line. Um, and we're going to uh, we'll get into this a little bit more, but there's more you can do with these simple shapes than just creating flat surfaces. And, and I'm not going to go into this yet because we're getting into advanced modeling tools. And you know me. I'll just keep drawing until it until it makes the shape that I want. So just, just keep that uh, on the back burner. And remember, we have these tools, and we're going to have to go back and practice all these different shapes. And once you have a conceptual idea of what you want to draw, um, you'll you'll be able to then refresh and review and, and look at the tools you're going to need to, to indeed make that, that shape. And you won't have a problem. It just takes a little bit of effort. So, again, that's a little bit on creating a roof by face, and we'll get more into that now. We're going to talk a little bit about um, creating a sloped glazing. And this is for all you uh, folks who have a green thumb. This is more along the lines of something um, with a, a, a glass roof. If you've ever been in the Winter Garden downtown, lower Manhattan, you see that a lot. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of places utilize this uh, type of roof to let the sun shine in, right? So uh, in chapter 13, you learned, as well as I did, that a curtain wall is just another wall type made out of panels and mullions, mullions organized in a grid system. Similarly, slope glazing is just another type of roof that has glass as material and mullions for divisions. Well, let's not forget that... Uh, I'm in here too, I don't want you to uh, forget about me. It has mullions for divisions. So, um, using slope glazing, you can make roof lights and shed lights and use them to design simple framing structures. To create slope glazing, make a simple pitched roof, select it, and use the properties palette to change the type to slate uh, sl slate glazing, slate slope glazing. I just woke up, it's a quarter to three. I haven't had enough coffee yet. All right, so we'll have to have the sides of this define the slope. Let me just ZA. Let's just go to wall architectural. And I'm definitely getting adjusted to my new glasses. It's something uh, I have to get uh, acclimated to. So if I was to go to the roof, Roof by footprint. You put it at level two for now, even though I want to go up. So I select all these walls and I select this wall. And if we remember, doesn't let don't let that define the slope. Don't let this one define the slope. Right? This one here, see if I got this right. 
Yeah, I got it right. All right, so as you can see, then we can just change this to slope glazing. Right? Now it's a sloped glazing. So it doesn't appear that it is, but it is. Once you have done that, activate the 3D view and use the curtain grid tool from the build panel, the architectural tab, and the ribbon to start applying horizontal or vertical grids that define the panel sizes. Then you can apply mullions using the mullion tool in the build panel. So uh, again, if we go to the architectural uh, curtain grid, right, we could start to define the grid of this, this wall of this uh, sloped roof. And as you can see, you have to really make sure you get in. And make sure you're on the right, right roof, right? And you'll have to tab to get The correct number of panels and quick connect uh, select the right edge so we've got that um, as you can see it's it's glass it's transparent and we can add some mullions and uh, and some segments and remove some segments and then we can customize it just like we did with the divided surface and apply uh, nested families within that surface to create a pattern, right, if you remember. It's not a divided surface yet, right? It's a, it's just a uh, sloped glazing. So we talked about that in the last chapter. So that, that's uh, one other way of creating a roof. And um, now we're gonna move on to uh, using sloped arrows. If your design calls for a slope roof with an unusual footprint that's not easily lend itself to using the defined slope property of boundary lines. Slope arrows can be added within the sketch of the roof. First create the sketch lines to define the shape of a roof, but do not check defined slope in the options bar. Instead, choose the slope arrow tool from the draw panel. Draw the slope arrow in the, de in the direction you want your roof to pitch. Select the arrow and in the properties palette you can set any of the parameters as shown in figure 14.38. The specified parameter can be set to either height at tail or slope. If you choose height at tail, be sure to specify the height offset at center at head parameter as the head result of the desired slope. Okay, well, if we go, let's see here if we could do it from uh, level two here. Just give me a second. Oops. I right, so we're level two. Here's our roof. And we go to architecture, define slope. Uh, okay. Hold that thought. Where's that tool? I actually just used it the other day, now I can't find it. In the options bar, right, right, right. Hold on. So it's in the context of actually drawing it. So let me, uh, let me get rid of this roof. And we'll go to uh, roof again. Roof by footprint. And there it is right there, slope out. So let's just pick, pick walls. And then slope arrow. Now, as you can see, it, when I draw it, you'll see height at tail. And then you have slope. So if I had height offset at head is 10. Height offset at tail is zero. So if I was just to leave that like that and hit OK, the tails of the slope arrows must be on the roof boundary. Okay, 
Well, that would bring that would bring it right to there, I believe, and that'll bring that right to there. I believe that's it. The tails of the slope arrows must not lie in interior of slope defining lines. Well, isn't that uh, almost impossible? Okay. Cannot lie in with slope defining lines. Okay. Well, I'll move it out. Can't keep elements joined. Well, cannot be within slope defining lines. Well, that's a, that's a speed bump. Is that, isn't that what it said? Can't be within slope defining lines? Okay, well, let me drag it out to there. Drag it out to there and see if I get what I need. The tails of all slopes must lie on the roof boundary. Well, I tried that, and it wouldn't let me. What that? The tails of slope arrows must not lie on the interior of slope-defining lines. Oh, well, let's turn off to find slope. Let's turn off to find slope. And let's bring this to the slope Defining line. See if that works. Can't make footprint of roof. Okay. It's too high. Maybe that's what it is. Let's select this again. Height offset at head. Height offset at tail. How about three foot. And because there's a slope of 912, let me see something. Let's see if I adjust the numbers so I can get something that I need. Can't make roof. Well, isn't that just the catch me out? Let me just double check this line. Define slope. There, okay, so I have all four walls or roof footprint um, lines as uh, selected with defined slope. So it was overriding the slope power. The slope power is what's going to dictate um, what's going to, uh, how that roof's going to be. So let me just uh, bring this to the side view here. Turn on a hidden line. And if I was to select all the walls, attach top base, so I can get this in a better, uh, a better light for you. Let me move this up a little bit. That's probably what's pro prohibiting us. Um, we don't have a level three, so that's always a challenge. So it's always best sometimes when you're creating a roof to have a, a ridge, uh, ridge joist level, right? So architecture, grid. Bring another level over here. And this is a little bit of work, but once you, uh, once you get it, Let's see if that'll work. All right, so that's the south elevation. As you can see, it's pitched. Now, let me go back to the 3D view. Let me select these walls. Attach top base. Let's see if that'll do it. Uh, unconnected. All right, well, as you can see, it's not attaching right this second. I'm not going to get overly uh, excited about it. I'm not going to try to find a solution just yet. 
but as you can see, that was the slope arrows. Um, it goes on to talk about using additional roof tools, soffit, fascia, and gutter. And uh, I'm just going to review, go back, and double check, make sure I could uh, find a solution for this. But I'm not going to, you know, talk your ear off while I do it. And that's, as a BIM solution specialist, depending on whether or not you're in the programming end of it, you're in the application end of it, whether you're in the MEP end of it or the architectural end of it, one of your main functions is to find solutions on how to make the software do what the client wants. So you'll spend most of your days uh, just searching for solutions, um, and that's 90% and that's of the job. That's why they call it an application. Just like paint. All right, so I just woke up. Um, I got to get the cobwebs out of my head. Um, we got a lot to do. We got to get to annotations. We got to get the stuff on paper. That's why I'm kind of rushing a little bit. Um, there'll be time for practice. But remember, remember your role in, in this whole scheme of things. Like I said, I came from the MEP side, not the, uh, I mean, granted, I, was, I went to school for architecture, but I took a different road. I took a telecommunications road. Um, all depends on how you come up, um, where you're going to fit in. And, and, and in, in the AEC industry, there's so many places where you uh, you have a role. So I'm not going to get uh, too far ahead of ourselves. Let's just stop it there, burn this to disk, and uh, I'm going to keep moving on. And we'll keep refining our practice, okay? So catch me on the other end.